Hi, it's Karen Q at Patriot Tours NYC, and I'm here in St. Paul's Graveyard. It's a few days after the July 4th celebration, and a while ago I did a video about the significant Revolutionary War graves in Trinity Churchyard. Now, Trinity Church and St. Paul's are the same parish, um, but I thought today I would walk through and show you some of the significant graves here at St. Paul's Chapel. And as you can see from back here, St. Paul's Chapel is sitting there um, beautiful as always since 1766 and this would have been the proper approach to the church at that time so we'll start back here which most people believe is the back of the graveyard which truly is the front of the graveyard I'm going to come over here to the left or to the northern part of the graveyard first and um, this flat this this grave doesn't have a flag on it um, likely because they're not aware of who it is as some of the records have been lost and this is the grave of William Denning William Denning was a merchant here in New York City a member of the Sons of Liberty and he also was a member of the committee to detect and defeat conspiracies and these were the guys who interviewed people to make sure you weren't a loyalist you know if you were spending too much time with British troops at your home or you were seen too much with people who were loyalists these guys would interview you to uh, try to find out which side you were really on so this is William Denning the merchant and we're gonna go back along the path. Oh, by the way, that's the Oculus and the World Trade Center, the new tower up there, kind of hard to see in the trees. So a really neat thing about this spot is that we're standing right here near one of the oldest things in Lower Manhattan still intact and right next to some of the most newest architecture as well. So as I walk along, we'll take a look at the Oculus, which uh, many of the young students I take on tours thinks looks like a giant dinosaur um, skeleton. So that's kind of a cool um, way to look at it. Oh, and I almost passed him. Let's go back over here. Sorry about that. And I want to excuse anyone who speaks French for my terrible French pronunciation, but this is uh, Dr. John Vacher, who was a young French officer under the command of uh, General Washington during the Revolutionary War. After the American Revolution, he chose to become a New Yorker, and he stayed and is buried here in uh, St. Paul's graveyard. And to the left of his grave, you can see a little star marker, and that indicates he is a Revolutionary War veteran. And let's move along the path a little bit more. We have a big grave coming up here on the left. A lovely monument for Colonel Rochefontaine, another French officer from the American Revolution. And let's come around here where you can see the front of the monument much better. And he should have a flag, and he does. And this is, uh, as he anglicized his name later, Stephen Rochefontaine, and he is the very first commander of the United States Army Corps of Engineers, as assigned by Commander Washington. He later also stayed in New York after the war, and he's the founder of the engineering school at the United States Military Academy at West Point. So there's uh, Colonel Rochefontaine, and we'll walk up the gray, we'll walk up the uh, pathway through the graveyard, and you'll see all of these old graves here. I'll give you a look at what it looks like on both sides. The graveyards are both very well maintained by Trinity Wall Street. We see lots of these old graves. The oldest of these graves would date to the 1760s, and I think the most recent is likely the 1830s. And right in front of that couple of trees there, you see a bunch of um, American flags in front of those trees. And those flags are marking the graves also of Revolutionary War veterans. And uh, one of those veterans is Major Jacob Sumter. And uh, Major Sumter was one of the guys who fought in the American Revolution, survived the war, and on his way back home to New York on a ship, he contracted yellow fever, and he died from the disease rather than the war. And it wasn't unusual that men survived the war and then died from disease later. So there's our three veterans over there in that little clump of trees, including Jacob Sumter. And let's walk around this way, and now we're closer to the church. And here's the beautiful entrance of St. Paul's. And, oh, right over here I wanted you to see this. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Let me see if I can get a little closer. Um, but right there is uh, the marker for a Freemason by that gravestone that looks kind of like a bench to the left. You'll see the Freemason marker there. So there's a... Revolutionary War veteran or someone who participated in the war who was also a Freemason. And we're going to take a walk over here to one of the most important graves in all of St. Paul's graveyard. And if you've been on my Revolutionary War tour, you know all about this person. And here we go. He's right over here. And this is the printer, John Holt. John Holt is the Liberty or Patriot printer of New York. And um, 
He's the first person in New York to print Benjamin Franklin's symbol, Unite or Die, which he put right across the masthead of his newspaper. He also is the printer who printed the Declaration of Independence that George Washington had read on the Commons July 9, 1776, to his army. So this is the great John Holt very well respected and honorable man of his time. He fled New York City during the American Revolution. He lived up in a town called Poughkeepsie throughout the war and returned after the war. And he was the first official printer to the state of New York. And up here you can see we're coming up on some other flags. But the grave I really want to talk about here is this one. Right there you can see it has a flag and a little marker in front of it. And that's the grave of John Bailey. John Bailey, a number, another member of the New York Sons of Liberty and a cutler. And it was John Bailey who made the sword that George Washington wore at his side throughout his service in the American Revolution. Um, that sword today is in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. So that is a quick look at the Revolutionary War veterans and people of our Revolutionary War note here in beautiful St. Paul's. St. Paul's was built in 1766, and if you can get down here to take a look at it, both the inside and outside are very beautifully preserved by Trinity Wall Street. So thanks for watching. I'm Karen Q, Patriot Tours, NYC.com.